So I know this was uh, the group was set up in about 2014, and I think your chairman said in 2016 they had done about three billion dollars worth of deals overseas. I believe mm -hmm. it was, um, but only one deal last year. Yes. Things are slowing down for you. Why? Yes. Uh, we think that in the current uh, circumstances, probably it's better to uh, slow down a little bit and focus on the transaction we really like. So last year we only closed one, that's a lot of uh, business, we really like the business. We spent a lot of years for the uh, DD and it's currently in the, the financial of, sector, right? Financial sector, it's uh, life uh, insurance again. So uh, it's life and the pension business in uh, Latin America. Uh, it's currently in the uh, regulatory approval uh, process. Hopefully, we can get it done by the end of the year or early next year. So only one deal last year, but that was more due to uh, kind of the restrictions by the Chinese government uh, on outbound investment by Chinese corporates to contain risk, right? Were you kind of downsizing already before this trade war? Uh, I, I don't think uh, the <laughs> slowdown is, uh, has nothing to do with the... Uh, with the uh, capital constraint, no. it's more like uh, we think that in current is in the current circumstances, it's very hard to find good transaction. A lot of company, uh, good companies out there, but. Uh, it's kind of too expensive, so uh, it's not very hard to find a good investment. So uh, this market uh, turmoil right now, yep. is that welcome to you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, asset prices could come down. Would you again revisit uh, M&A? Sure. I, I think in the last uh, couple of years, uh, there will be more opportunities. Uh, as the uh, current uh, turmoil there, I think probably the price of the companies will come down. That's definitely, for an investment company, that's a good scene. Now, we know the group is kind of pivoting more towards the domestic economy. Uh, do you see this trade war and ramped rhetoric between the two countries, the fact that they're not even talking, does that kind of help serve the Chinese government's narrative that we want to invest more domestically? We want to invest more in our high-tech companies. Is that what your group is going to follow? I think this group actually uh, started this closely. Uh, whether it's a you know, trade conflict or not, I think the uh, Chinese economy definitely is in a transformation uh, period of time. And there is a lot of uh, upgrading opportunities both in the consumption sector and industrial upgrading sectors. So the group is focusing on that. Uh, I think the uh, trade conflict between U.S. and China definitely put the pressure on the Chinese economy. But uh, we believe that focusing on those domestic consumption sector will do a lot of opportunities for the group. So your remit, though, is international. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what's, your, what's your goal right now in mean, this well, next year? We uh, currently we're building uh, the series we acquired in 2016. Currently we're building the insurance on, group. Yeah, the insurance group. Uh, it's in the process of listing, so uh, we're building on that. And also we actively uh, you know, study and looking for more opportunities in the next few years. As I said, uh, probably more opportunities in the next few years. The slow down, slow down in the past so currently, problem is we're busy as well. Where would be the best opportunities? Are you still looking at the United States? I know you said Europe and the United States a couple of years ago would be mm. your priorities. Uh, US, US uh, I think has still a lot of opportunity there and also Latin and Southeast Asia. That would be uh, three regions that uh, we, we think uh, we can find opportunities. I think in January you guys said you were interested in senior care in Australia. Is that something that's happening? Uh, we have a healthcare subsidiary within the group. Uh, senior care uh, definitely is one of the sectors that, uh, well, uh, a lot of opportunity in China as well, because China, China is now an uh, aging country, uh, and the aging problem is just started. So uh, yeah. aging care definitely, that would be something really interesting. How about the Middle East? We know that the Qatar Financial Center Authority CEO yep. recently visited you. Yes. Yeah, yeah? Yes. Any deals? Anything happening there? I think it's just in the you know, very starting uh, kind of period of time. We started to talk. Uh, they have a great interest in investing in China. I think they are, that's a very reputable, good uh, uh, investor, so, uh, but uh, we haven't got anything uh, solely yet. But, but, uh, but at least you're talking. Yes. yes. Yeah. We, uh, so the on the contract. overseas acquisition front, how does a weakening yuan help you? Do you look at that closely? I mean, we're looking at the potential, I mean, d does it hurt you? I mean, uh, we're looking at possibly crossing over the seven threshold to the dollar. Hmm. Well, it just depends. I mean, uh, there are always uh, fluctuations on the, on the uh, market and the currencies. 
Well, I, I would say that's a case-by-case case scenario. Yeah. yeah. What's your general outlook for this trade spat between China and the United States? Are well, you looking at long-time horizon? I think this is not something new. It happened before and probably will happen again in the future. Uh, well, generally, I don't think the trade conflict uh, helps anyone. It probably hurt everyone, including U.S. and China. But uh, looking to long term, uh, I think that's just a short term uh, flight to Asia. In the long term, uh, I'm an idealist. I still believe the world is one.